Hi, so today I want to give an introduction to simple harmonic motion. I'm going to talk about what it exactly is and how we can represent it graphically. Um, in the future videos, I'm going to talk about how equations can be derived for simple harmonic motion because it's a very huge step in and of itself, and also energy in simple harmonic motion. So keep updated for that. Uh, where can we see simple harmonic motion and what exactly is it? Well, simple harmonic motion is basically a form of oscillation. And we've learned a lot about oscillation in the previous chapter. So in the previous video, I mean. So if we had a pendulum and it was oscillating back and forth, that is following simple harmonic motion. Uh, to give a, a good picture of that, if we have a violin right here and we pluck, pluck one of the strings and we let it go, then it's going to vibrate back and forth like this. Um, and obviously it would vibrate less and less and it would become quiet again, but that's out of the question. This part is when it's following simple harmonic motion. Let's say we had a trolley and then we had a spring that connected the trolley to some fixed wall or something. We pulled the trolley out here and we let it go. Because of the energy that is contained by the spring, it's going to oscillate back and then out again and out again and back again and out again and back again. And it's going to follow simple harmonic motion. This is the pendulum that I have just talked about here. Even when we talk, uh, sound is basically transmitted by the air molecules and if we enlarge them we're gonna see these tiny little air molecules they're also going to be vibrating back and forth and following simple harmonic motion even in and this is a very poor drawing of a molecule that has elastic sort of bonds it's going to be vibrating back and forth even as it is just here in solids every single molecule or atom is vibrating in an alternating current, um, the current direction is constantly changing. This means that the electrons within the wires are also constantly going back and forth and back and forth about a fixed position, and that is also following simple harmonic motion. So now that we have an idea of what exactly it is, how can we define it? Well, there are three requirements of simple harmonic motion. First of all, re we require a mass that is oscillating. We also require a position where the mass is in equilibrium. And then we require a restoring force that returns the mass to its original position, directly proportional to the displacement x. What this means is, if we would draw a pendulum um, this is the displacement from original position, x. And when this is here, the force is going to the equilibrium position. It's in the direction of the equilibrium position. And that's why if you let go of the pendulum, it's going to move and accelerate to this equilibrium position, x. The further you put it, the bigger the force to go back would be. The smaller you put it, the smaller the force to go back would be. You would not accelerate by that much. So that is what that means. As long as we have the mass, the equilibrium position, and also that one force that obeys this rule, then we're going to have an object in simple harmonic motion. It would be helpful to talk about how an object in simple harmonic motion actually moves. So. I could take my pen right here. And this is a pendulum again. We're using them really often in this chapter. Um, the conventional way to put it is the right side is positive. Um, the displacement to the right side is, you know, graphed as a positive displacement. And the di displacement to the left side is graphed as a negative displacement. Um, if we let go of this right here, it would move from the right to the left, which means that the velocity is negative. However, if we let go of this right here, it's going to move from the left position, which is the negative, to the positive position, and the velocity will be positive. It would accelerate towards the equilibrium position, but then it would decelerate as it reaches the other end of the oscillation. What this means is that 
the change in whether or not it accelerates or decelerates happen exactly in this position, the equilibrium position. This also tells us that this has the maximum speed or the maximum velocity. Or actually, we could also say this is the minimum if it was going in the opposite direction, right? But whatever it is, it's just going to have the maximum speed. The magnitude of the motion's speed is going to be the greatest in the middle position because that's where it has accelerated the most after this is going to start decelerating anyways. So yeah, this constant pattern of acceleration, deceleration, change like instantaneous rest and then changing direction and acceleration again is going to be something that is maintained to like throughout the simple harmonic motion. In order to represent simple harmonic motion of an object graphically, you might want to have a setup just like this one. What we have right here is this is a trolley. You can see the wheels and it actually has a car that's like stuck on top of it. Um, it is connected to two fixed plates or walls by these two springs. And this is a sensor as well as a transmitter and the transmitter is transmitting electromagnetic waves. So if we pull the trolley to one side and let it go, it would oscillate back and forth about the equilibrium position. And if I were to mark the equilibrium position, it'd be here. So it would oscillate about this. We can use the sonar technique to get displacement of the trolley within, with time, with respect to time. So this is going to give out a certain ultraviolet... Um, or ultrasonic pulses actually, ultrasonic. And what this means is that the frequency of these sound waves that are being transmitted are higher than 20,000 hertz. So it's not going to be audible to us. Um, after the card reflects these waves, it's going to sense this and you're going it's going to use basically the time that it took for it to be reflected to get an idea of where the displacement is because we already know the speed of these sound waves so these ultrasonic pulses from the transmitter are reflected by the card and the reflected pulses are detected so that they can be represented on a computer um, and it's a very accurate way of doing so it's very very mathematical the graphical representation, uh, the more conventional way to do it is that the beginning of the motion in the graphical representation is considered to be when the mass is at the middle and moving towards the right. To say the middle, I mean equilibrium position. And when we say that it is moving towards the right, it means that it is going towards the positive direction. So what would this look like if we represented it on a graph? It would look something like this. So let's first of all look at this right here. This is the XT graph, which is the displacement time graph. So for a certain thing moving about, it's going to start in the equilibrium position. So the displacement from the equilibrium position is zero. Then it's going to move here um, where it goes. And this is when it hits the top of its positive displacement, which means it's the furthest it's gone towards its right. And then it's going to come back and it's going to hit its equilibrium again. It's going to go to this side where it hits its maximum negative displacement. It's going to go back and then repeat. Now, with this very, very simple graph, we can actually relate it to different types of graphs. The velocity time graph and the acceleration time graph. And we can look at the relationships between these two. So for example, for the velocity time graph, um, we can see that when the, when the object is passing through its equilibrium point, it has a maximum velocity. And why is that so? It's because when you're at other either end of the equilibrium position, 
you're accelerating towards this. And after that, you start to decelerate, as we've talked about before, which is why in the equilibrium position or when x is 0, v is going to be the highest. You can see when x is 0, v is the highest. x is 0, v is the highest. However, um, the pendulum will moment momentarily stop on its extreme positions and when it's like instantaneously at rest when it changes direction so you can see at its point where it changes direction when it changes direction at its maximum you could see that the velocity is zero you could see that the velocity is zero so it's, it's very it makes sense how it graphs onto this we can graph this again onto the acceleration at graph um so basically this is if you look at, like, if you don't look at this part, you will see that this AT graph is the direct flipped version of the XT graph. Now, why is this so? Well, when the pendulum is on this side, um, although the motion is might be towards here, the force is always going to act to reduce their displacement. The force is always going to act in the direction of the equilibrium motion, which is to say that the force is always on the opposite side or the opposite direction to the displacement. If your displacement is to the right, then the force is going to be to the left. Um, and yeah, this is why we have this sort of pattern showing. We could also describe it in relation to the velocity. So when the velocity, for example, is the highest at its middle, this is when the acceleration is zero. Why is that? It's because until here we're accelerating and then we're just decelerating. So this is when it changes and hence it is zero. And then as you hit zero over here, you will change directions and that's when your acceleration is the fastest and it follows this system. So you can get it very easily um, out of common sense really if you understand the system. So the more important thing that we get out of this is that acceleration is proportional to the displacement flipped negative of the displacement. Um, and also at the equilibrium position, if we're able to see here, uh, when the x is 0, a is also 0, right? And that's because at the equilibrium position, the displacement from the equilibrium position is obviously 0, right? And we've previously talked about the force um, of a simple harmonic motion is going to be directly proportional to the displacement. When the displacement is zero, then the force, the restoring force is going to be zero. If the force is zero, the acceleration is zero. And that's why we have this pattern that we see right here. Um, and then we can talk about frequency and angular frequency, but that's going to be for the next um, video. And that's all going to be about the different equations that you have to memorize and understand when we're talking about oscillations. But for the intro, that was about it. So thank you so much for watching.